Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. We're going to remove some of this weather stripping from both sides. You just slide it up. There's little clips that hold it in. Just slide it like that. Just pull it back. We just want to pull it back to there. That's good enough. And we'll do the same for the other side. Just slide it up and slide it back. And that's good right there. We're going to remove these six retainer clips. One here, one here, there, there, all around. I'm going to use a trim tool to remove them. So just slide underneath, pull the clip off, and do the same for the other ones. Oops. Now we're going to lift this trim piece. There is some retainers that hold it in, so you're going to use a little force and pull it up. And same on this side. Pull this off, those two little retainers that were holding it in. We're going to remove these six 10 millimeter bolts right here. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Take that last 10 millimeter bolt out. All right, I'm going to turn the tire to the side so that I can access these Phillips head screws right here. There's a Phillips head screwdriver. Use a stubbier Phillips head screwdriver. Make it a little easier because of the tire. one more on the inside there. So I'm going to turn the tire the other way to access this other screw. Oops. Pull that screw out. There's a push pin right here. So I'm going to use this trim removal tool, get under the push clip, pull that out, and I can pull this inner fender well out of my way just a little bit. Next I'm going to take this bolt out. This holds the front bumper onto the fender. Uh, I'm going to use a 7 millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet. We're going to do the same for the other side. So with the vehicle raised up, uh, we're going to take these 10 millimeter bolts out. We have ours on a two post lift. You could use a jack and jack stance. I'm going to remove these bolts, these 10 millimeter bolts with a 10 millimeter socket, an extension and a ratchet. All right, those are all up.
Now I'm going to grab the bumper right here and I'm going to give it a aggressive pull like that and do the same for the other side. Just like that. All right. It's a good idea to have a partner help you pull the bumper off. Pull this part and slide this. <clears throat> this rivet is what's holding the bumper still on. Just slide it up a little bit. Slide that. Slide the bumper out. And there's a wiring harness over here. It's a little lock on the connector. So we're going to pull that lock out a little bit. Then I can push down on the tab of the connector and then pull the connector out. That's a little tab and you just push that and pulls the connector out. And we have a washer fluid hose right here. I'm going to just disconnect it right here. Grab the tube, work it back and forth. Wash fluid is going to come out of there, so you might want to cap it with a cap. Pull the bumper off. The front bumper parking sensors are located right here. There's one right here. There's two more on that side. I'll show you how to take one out, and the procedure would be the same for the other. So I'll take a flat blade screwdriver. I'm just gonna move this lock, that red lock out. Then I can push down right there. And that will remove the wire connector. And I can take my screwdriver. I'm gonna put a little pressure on the front of the sensor. There's a lock here. And then a lock on the bottom side. Work it. Just work it out a little bit and then pull the sensor out. Now we can reinstall the sensor and line it up. Push it straight on, make sure it locks in place. Take the electrical connector, plug it in. That. and then push down on the lock tab. All right, so now we're gonna slide our bumper back over here. We're gonna reattach this washer fluid hose. Connect that together. And then this electrical connector is gonna connect right there. Can you see it? It's going to connect right there, line that up, lock it in place, and then push down on the lock. Now we'll pull the bumper up. It's going to slide in on the top here. That'll lock in there. Over here on the sides, you might have to pull the bottom down a little bit. This will slide into place. Give it a little tap. Line that up. You'll do the same for the other side. Make sure it all lines up.
Next we're going to install these three bolts underneath. Get them all started first. Once those are started, I'm going to snug them down. Next we're going to install these bolts on the side of the bumper. It's a seven millimeter bolt. It's going to go right there. I'll use my seven millimeter socket extension and ratchet. Snug it up. And that's snugged up. Next we'll install this push pin right there for the inner wheel housing. And then we'll put these screws. We'll get these all started so they all line up. Once those are all started, we can tighten them up. Use a Phillips head screwdriver. It's nice to use a shorter one so that you can get in here better. You can move the tire back and forth. And just snug those up. And then we'll do the same for the other side. Next we're going to put these 10 millimeter bolts in. We're going to have to push on the bumper a little bit to get them to line up with the holes. We'll get all these started and then we'll snug them down. Once they're all started, just use my 10 millimeter socket and my ratchet. Just snug it down. Remember it is plastic so you don't want to over tighten it. Next we'll install this trim piece. Just slide this over. Line it up. Once it's all lined up in the back, just push it down, lock it in place. You can install all these push clips. Next, we're going to install this weather stripping. There's little holes that these clips will line up with the holes. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull on the weather strip a little bit and slide it on the clip. And do the same for the other side. Close the hood. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.